Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna be talking about how to increase glutathione naturally if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Even though we are specifically, sorry, specifically talking about those people who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, this information will still apply to everybody, including people who do not have a thyroid. It is still important for you to have a sufficient amount of glutathione, regardless of your thyroid status. It just so happens that improving glutathione has a specific or special benefit to those people who have Hashimoto's because glutathione is the thing that protects your thyroid gland from inflammation. So if you can spend some time to reduce inflammation inside of the thyroid gland to protect it, then you can go a long way to preventing your body from requiring thyroid medication for the rest of your life if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That's why this information matters. So let's get into these. I have about 11 here and we'll talk about them as we go and it'll make a lot of sense for you. So number one, we have glycine supplements. You can actually take a glycine supplement and that will help your body produce glutathione because it is a building block that your body needs to produce glutathione, right? It makes a lot of sense. Now, how do you get glycine? One of the easiest ways to get glycine is in a collagen or a gelatin supplement. These supplements or these protein powders really tend to have a high concentration of glycine. Before you go out and use them though, just ensure that they do have enough sufficient amount of glycine by looking on the amino acid profile on the back of that supplement. So to ensure that you're actually getting what you think you're getting. A lot of people are not getting enough glycine because of the common foods that it's found in. They're just not really included in the standard American diet. Number two, you can take a glutathione supplement. So if for whatever reason you didn't want to consume something like glycine, we also have other supplements which we'll be talking about by the way, you could take glutathione directly. The only downside to using a glutathione supplement is that your body uses that glutathione rather quickly. So if you wanted to continually ensure that you're getting glutathione in the body, you'd probably have to take glutathione several times throughout the day. That's the only downside. Now, fortunately, it still does benefit you and it still does work, which is why I've included it in my Thyroid Daily Essentials uh, supplement, which is a daily thyroid multivitamin for thyroid patients. Um, just realize though that if you are using a glutathione supplement, your body's going to move through it pretty rapidly. So it's often best to use a combination of natural ways to increase glutathione as well as taking it in supplement form. Number three, another option is to consider using a coffee enema. Now, the, one of the reasons that this is beneficial is because of the enterohepatic circulation. So when you use a coffee enema, you're getting that coffee to the liver directly via that circulation, and that causes an increase in glutathione to about 600% according to some reports. Now, what that means though, is that this glutathione is not staying localized in the liver. Instead, it's being pushed out to the rest of the body, to the places that you may need it. So in the case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you're producing it in the liver, the liver's on this side. The liver is then pushing that glutathione out and it's going to the place that you need it, in this case, the thyroid gland. Number four, you can take selenium. Now, a lot of patients with Hashimoto's are deficient in selenium, and we know from studies that when these patients take selenium, they actually see a reduction in thyroid antibodies. This doesn't apply to everybody though. This really only applies to those people who have existing selenium deficiency before they take the supplement. Now, one of the reasons for this, we don't actually know why this occurs, but one of the plausible reason that this occurs, reasons that this occurs is because glutathione is produced via an enzyme that requires the use of selenium. So, that's kind of complicated, but let me put it this way. Selenium is involved in a selenoprotein, which your body then uses to create glutathione. So if you don't have enough selenium, your thyroid gland may not be able to produce enough glutathione. But if you take that selenium, then suddenly that enzyme is able to function and you can have more glutathione produced inside of the thyroid gland. So selenium is an option. I would say that in my experience, many patients who have Hashimoto's and thyroid diseases in general, by the way, are deficient in selenium and do benefit from using it. Number five, another option, another natural way to increase selenium is to consume foods that are high in sulfur. Sulfur, again, is a building block for your body that it needs to produce glutathione. So if you can produce or consume, not produce, if you can consume more foods that are high in sulfur, you can ensure that that building block exists so that your body can then produce it. Now, what type of foods are high in sulfur? This includes cruciferous vegetables, garlic, shallots, and onions. There are other food groups as well, but these are the, the fruits and veggies that tend to have high amounts of sulfur. Now, what if you can't consume these vegetables for whatever reason, or these food groups that I mentioned? You do have a couple of other options. So number one, you can take a sulforaphane supplement. Now, as the name implies, sulforaphane, these sulforaphane is high in sulfur. So if you can't get your sulfur from your food, you can consider doing it in supplement form. Sulforaphane is the ingredient found inside of these, these vegetables, and it is the thing that provides a lot of the benefit that these vegetables carry. Now, they do, con they do have a, a number of other ingredients, such as phytochemicals and so on. So it isn't the case that just taking a sulforaphane supplement will mean that you don't have to consume veggies. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that one way to get sulfur inside of your body so you can produce more glutathione is by taking a sulforaphane supplement 
if for whatever reason you cannot consume the raw form of the vegetable itself. Now there is some concern among patients who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis or thyroid disease in general that these things are considered goitrogens. And yes, sulforaphane is considered a goitrogen and yes, some uh, of the vegetables I mentioned, especially cruciferous vegetables, are considered goitrogens. The, that isn't a problem for most people though, unless you're consuming high quantities. And even if that is the case, you can combat that by just consuming a little bit of extra iodine. So you can outcompete out the, the blocking of iodine from the goitrogen compounds. Another option that you can use is you can take milk thistle. Milk thistle is a supplement that works inside of the liver and it has been shown in some studies to result in an increase in glutathione. So if you didn't wanna take sulforaphane, you could try milk thistle, which works directly on the liver. And then lastly, another thing that you can try is the use of a B complex vitamin. A lot of the B vitamins are involved in the recycling of glutathione. So if you are deficient in these B vitamins, then even though your body may be able to produce it, it may not be able to recycle it as quickly so it can get it reproduced over and over and over again. Because remember, your, your cells need protection all the time. They're constantly under damage um, and they're constantly need to be fixed. So you need that glutathione to stay, not only to be produced, but also to be recycled. Number seven, another thing that you can try is the use of whey protein or raw milk. Now I've talked about whey protein previously, but we will talk about, there's a caveat to this section, so I will mention that in just a second. But I have mentioned whey protein in another video where I went into detail on the pros and cons of various protein powders for Hashimoto's. One of the big benefits to using whey protein is that it seems to have, for whatever reason, a large boost to glutathione production when it is consumed. Now, it's not exactly, we don't know exactly why this occurs, but it is felt to probably be related to the amino acid profile that whey protein contains. So by consuming whey protein, you're ensuring that your body has those building blocks to produce it on its own. Now, yes, you will get some benefit, even if you're not using whey protein in the production of glutathione. So that does exist, but there seems to be something special about whey protein. Number two, you can try raw milk. Now notice I, I, I specify here raw milk and not pasteurized milk. The pasteurization process removes the whey proteins found inside raw milk, so it's not as effective. Now, one of the potential downsides to using dairy products, especially in patients who have Hashimoto's, is that it can cause um, immune reactions. So it can actually result in inflammation and stir up the immune system and make your condition a little bit worse. In fact, we have studies which show that Hashimoto's patients who remove dairy actually see improvement in their thyroid lab tests. So it may not be the case that, people, that patients with Hashimoto's should use number seven, which is whey protein or raw milk, but if you can get away with it, it may be something to consider. And it, again, if you wanna talk about the pros and cons, I'd recommend going to that video that I, that I mentioned previously about protein powders in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where I lay this out in a lot more detail. Number eight, another thing that you can try is taking a magnesium supplement. Magnesium is required for a lot of processes inside of the body, but especially in the production of ATP. And because glutathione production is an ATP intensive process, your body needs that production, ATP, to have the energy to produce glutathione. That's kind of how it's working. In the case of patients who have Hashimoto's, they also tend to suffer from magnesium deficiency for two big reasons. Number one, stress depletes magnesium. And a lot of thyroid patients are under a lot of stress and they're not as resilient to stress because of the impact that the thyroid has, low thyroid function has on adrenal function. So you're probably not as resilient to stress as you once were pr before you had your thyroid problem. Number two, thyroid conditions can alter the excretion of magnesium inside of the kidneys. So you may be able to, you may, depending on your condition, be excreting more magnesium than you want so your body cannot retain it. So you're constantly needing to replace that magnesium level. Magnesium is something that I take all the time um, and my, I don't have thyroid problems, but my wife does and she takes it about five to six times per week just to ensure that our magnesium level is optimal. Number nine, get enough sleep. I know I talk about this and people, they, they tend to, whenever I say get enough sleep, they'll say I try and I cannot get enough sleep. I have an entire video and blog post which outlines tips that you can use to ensure you're getting enough sleep. And if you're not sleeping, let's say, eight, eight and a half to nine hours a night, your body may not be producing enough glutathione. So make sure you check out that video, check out those tips, make sure you're getting the sleep that your body needs. Number 10, number 10 and 11 kind of go together and this has to do with treating conditions which are underlying inside of your body and these conditions can limit or inhibit glutathione production. So number uh, 11 or number 10 here, we're talking about thyroid dysfunction. So if you have Hashimoto's, there is a good, and you're listening to this, there's a good chance that your thyroid is not functioning optimally. And if your thyroid is not functioning optimally, if it is not optimized, if your thyroid medication is not optimized, or if you're using natural therapies and your thyroid is not at 100%, you are limiting the amount of ATP and energy that your cells can produce. And if you are limiting that, that ATP production, then you're limiting the amount of glutathione that you can produce. So it is very important if you're trying to optimize glutathione that your thyroid gets treated correctly. 
Now, there are lots of ways to do this. I, I said it before, a lot of patients with Hashimoto's listening to this are probably taking some form of thyroid medication. And that's okay, if that's what you're doing, just ensure that that medication and dose is optimized. If you are going the all natural route using things like diet and supplements and so on, stress reduction, sleep, detoxification and so on, if you're going that route, that's okay but you still have to ensure that your thyroid is optimized at 100%. If it isn't, maybe it's a good idea to try and consider a dose of thyroid medication just to boost you back up to that optimized level so that your body can then kind of kick into gear. Okay, that was number 10. Number 11 kind of goes along with it because it's not really um, something that you can do so much as it's something that you want to prevent or reverse, and that is insulin resistance. A lot of patients with thyroid conditions, especially low thyroid conditions, but even high thyroid conditions, suffer from something called insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is an inflammatory condition inside of the body and will limit your body's ability to produce ATP. So if that condition is present, you should spend some time and energy trying to reverse it. And while you're at it, optimize your thyroid and then add several of these other things that we've talked about today. And that will ensure that your body is getting that glutathione that it needs to the thyroid gland to protect it. So remember, glutathione is protective to the thyroid gland and prevents potentially the need for you to be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life. That's all I have for you guys today. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better. You can find the link to those resources in the description below. Um, and otherwise, that's all I have for you guys. So I will see you in the next one.